G'day, it's Alastair from Mango's Mapping with you once again. Today we're going to run through a little bit of information about Base Shift Project and tomorrow we're going to go out and apply it in the field. People are often asking me, what does Base Shift do and how do I use it? So we're going to give you a practical example of how that works. But essentially what Base Shift does is it allows you to set up your base anywhere, not over a known mark, and to be able to coordinate corrections from your base to your rover by occupying a known point with your rover. That then creates an offset that is applied to all of the corrections that are sent from your base so that all of the future points that are collected during that session are also correct. Tomorrow we'll go out and do that in the field. Today we're going to set up a project that allows us to head out in the field tomorrow and do that work. So to get started, we're going to first use Emlid Flow 360 to establish our project and with our project to set up a couple of existing benchmarks in the area that we're going to be doing our survey work tomorrow. So we're opening Flow 360 because it's really easy to add data to a Windows interface with a nice big screen. So we'll put our permanent survey marks in here that we know the coordinates for that we're going to use tomorrow. One to apply the base shift and a second one to occupy with our rover to make sure that the positions that we're getting are reasonably consistent with the known coordinates for that benchmark. So now that we have our Emlid Flow 360 project created, we're in a position to be able to add to that project a couple of permanent survey marks that are in the area that we want to operate tomorrow. They're both down near the river and we really want to set our base up on a hill where there are no survey control infrastructure. But we can do that using the base shift feature. So we've got our project open, now we need to add our permanent survey marks to that. And to get the coordinates for those permanent survey marks, we're very lucky here in Australia that we have an app called Benchmark. We've got a separate video on that if you'd like to know more about it. But it contains all of the permanent survey mark information and the coordinates for those marks so I can use those coordinates to create the marks in my project. So I've navigated in Benchmark down to the area that I want to work and I can see these benchmarks down near the river. So I'm going to add those two to Emlid Flow 360. Why am I adding two when I only need one for the base shift feature? Well the whole idea is that when we set the base up off a known point, just on the grass, on a hill, and we go and occupy one known point with the rover to apply the base shift feature. It's nice to be able to put the rover over a second known mark to make sure that the coordinates that you're observing are reasonably consistent with the known coordinates for that mark. Right, so we'll enter the first PSM here. We'll just call it a PSM. We don't need any codes. It's a local coordinate system, and using Good old benchmark, we can get the coordinates for this mark. Always a good idea to double check your coordinates as you type them in. Blunders are a surveyor's worst enemy, apart from dogs I suppose. And we need to apply some elevation to this as well. There we go, we create that point. And what we should see is that point popping up in the northeast of Australia. If everything's worked out well, we can see that point. And if we scroll all the way out, yep, you can see that it's down by the river, between the river and the road. And we're now going to add another point that's down next to the Herbert and Historic Village. And then tomorrow we're going to set the base up, up on top of this hill over here, where we've got much greater visibility over the area that we'd like to do our survey work. So it makes a lot more sense to put the base up there, where A, it's away from the main road, so it's less likely to get stolen or disturbed, and B, it's on a nice high point, so it can propagate that radio correction easily. So let's just select the second control point, the second permanent survey mark. Waiting for that to draw while that comes up, I will bring up, add another point here, and it's auto-incremented it to 179554, it's very handy, it is the next number. That is also a PSM, local coordinates, let's bang in some coordinates for it. Three. Thank you. 
Now I've done this on my screen because I really love the feature of MLED Flow 360 to be able to easily create projects on my desktop. If you find yourself doing this in the field and you're jumping between Benchmark and MLED Flow to be able to push the coordinates from one app into the other, there's a little secret and that is that if you long tap over those coordinates, you can hit the copy and that copies those coordinates into the memory of the phone so that you can then paste them into the MLED Flow app, minimising the potential for blunders. Handy little tip, unwritten documentation. Thanks very much Stephen from Geolocata for including that feature. So what we've done now is we've created our two permanent um, survey marks in the project, one down here and one over here. So tomorrow we'll be able to set the base up on top of the hill, come down, occupy one of these permanent survey marks and apply base shift. And once we've applied base shift, we ought to be able to occupy the second permanent survey mark and see good agreement between the observed coordinates and the known coordinates for that permanent survey mark. Once you've achieved that, you will then have the confidence to go and collect points with precision throughout the day and go back at the end of the day and once again occupy that permanent survey mark and make sure that you've still got coordinates that are in good agreement. That way you know that the base station hasn't been disturbed and that all of the coordinates that you've collected during the day can be trusted. Thanks very much, we'll see you tomorrow. G'day, so today we're up in Herbert and in Far North Queensland and we're going to do some survey work down in the valley. The challenge that we've got is that the survey control that we want to use is also down in the valley and it's not really in a very good spot to broadcast corrections from the base to the rover. So today we're going to use the base shift feature in MLED Flow to allow us to put the base anywhere we like. In this case, a nice elevated spot with a view down over the valley. What we've done is we've connected the extended range LoRa antenna, which allows us to really elevate the LoRa antenna, put a high gain antenna on that, which is gonna maximize the propagation of the radio. Of course, we don't have a survey mark here with known coordinates. I have put a temporary mark in the ground here so we can come back and reoccupy it again tomorrow if we need to. But what we're going to do is use the base shift feature in MLED Flow, which allows us to set the base anywhere we like and to simply occupy a known point with the rover and activate the base shift feature inside MLED Flow. Once we've got that active, we're right to go and survey with confidence and precision. So just before we head off and occupy our survey mark and activate the base shift feature, I'm just gonna make sure that the rover is communicating effectively with the base and that it's a reasonable, reasonably close distance away. The aim of that is not to end up a kilometre down the road and to try and, you know, trouble pick any blunders with our setup. So I'm just going to go in, there's my Demo 5 receiver, grab that, jump into my project, zoom into my current location, and if I zoom in on the pole, I should see that my base and my rover are very close to each other. Uh, coming over, and what I can do is actually jump into the status and if I scroll down on the status it actually shows me the distance of the base and it's 27 centimeters it's not perfect but because the base's position isn't perfectly known at this point and we don't have base shift active I'm pretty happy with that it shows me that they're communicating I've got fix and I'm good to go let's get started so we've come down from the base setup to a survey mark that we can occupy and apply the base shift feature in MLED Flow. This is a PSM that we've already entered into our project yesterday back at the computer. So now all we need to do is go into MLED Flow, make sure that we're connected to the rover, go into the project, select the project, and without the base shift feature active, we need to collect a point with the base in its sort of, you know, uncorrected manner. So I'm just going to uh, type in a code for benchmark, and we're gonna call this one measured, and we're gonna hit save. That's saved. So now I can move out of the point data collection, go into the project tray and access the base shift setting. Okay, we're in base shift setting and we're going to go and select a measured point from the project and we can see our measured point, so we've selected that. We're going to go back into the known point and select the PSM that we are currently occupying, 553, and we can see that there's a calculated shift below that of 
you know, under a metre easting, over a metre northing, and about eight metres in elevation. I'll hit apply, and that has now activated base shift for this project. So in theory, we're right to get to work and start surveying things and collecting observations on features of interest and be confident that they are correctly coordinated to this PSM. To give us an additional sense of confidence and you know, best practice, we're going to go and occupy a survey mark just up the road and compare the coordinates of the known uh, coordinates for that survey mark with the observed coordinates. And we expect to see fairly tight agreement between those two. And we'll do that again at the end of the day to have confidence that the base hasn't been disturbed. Let's head off. So we've come to a second benchmark. We'll go into MLID flow and make sure that we select the project and the receiver that we're working with. So there's our receiver, it's connecting, jump into our project. We've got base shift active, that's really great. What we can do now is occupy this benchmark and select it from our points in our project and stake it out. And what we're really looking for is good agreement between the observed coordinates and the known coordinates here. So our stakeout figures should be quite low, indicating that we are very close. Looking at my stakeout, I can see that horizontally I'm within 16 mil and vertically I'm within 10 to 15 mil. So I'm really happy with that result and it's good to go. We're ready to get to work. At the end of the day, of course, I'll come back and occupy it once more to make sure that my base station hasn't been disturbed during the day. And well, it's as easy as that, folks. Base shift. Give it a go. Thanks very much. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Look forward to seeing you next time. Remember, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. We'll see you next time.